The magic of October can appear in many forms. Its energy can unite a team and strengthen a community. For the 2012 San Francisco Giants, it will inspire performances that bring a collective dream one step closer to reality. Determined. Relentless. Together. This is Inside the Clubhouse. are trailing six to four. Two down, runner at first. There goes Pagan, the pitch, swing of the ground ball right along the first baseline, knocked down by Craig, down to his knees, under hands to Mott covering for the out, and the ball game is over. Whatever happened in Cincinnati already happened. You know, that's been played already. We have to just, just focus and, and, and at least take one tomorrow. One thing is apparent about this postseason, say, as compared to 2010. The Giants were a front-running team. They never one time faced elimination. They've already had three elimination games this year. They won all of them. And they won game one of every one of those series in 2010. And they really use that. They leverage that. They put so much pressure on their opponents that year. And, and this year's team is, I guess they're just a little different because they're going to play with the pressure on them once again. You know, this is not to disparage players on our team, but, uh, you know, you look at the Dodger bench and you look at our bench. To deepen the roster, the Giants acquired a 36-year-old veteran infielder in a seemingly insignificant trade, a player who became known as Blockbuster. When you look back on it, maybe the most impactful trade of the entire season was Scudero to the Giants. And so I think the Blockbuster was tweaking the Dodgers a little bit, but also acknowledging that Scudero was a huge difference maker. You know, I hadn't seen him play a lot, watch him on TV, played against the Giants. Yeah, he's a good player. He's a good player. But when he put on a Giants uniform, he was much better than a good player. He was a terrific player. You know, when I got here, after a couple of days, I kind of look around and I see my, my teammates and I said uh, to myself, I said, I think we have a very good chance to, to do something special. He's a veteran guy. Those moments when you need it, he's being clutch. You know, he came here to one, one mission, one goal. Yeah. That's one of the guy's phones on speaker. Unfortunately, uh, whoever's calling didn't get the memo that they're playing right now, but uh, right now we're just gonna go around and pack up their jerseys and their light jackets. Scudero already did, except his jacket. Ordinary t-shirts to undershirts to shorts. Keeping up with the actual days of the week is a challenge in and of itself because they all seem to run together, especially this time of year. If we're able to pull this out, I mean, there is no question we will earn this victory for sure because, I mean, that's a team over there that will never accept losing in, 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 at any point in any game. It should be a fun series. Stay tuned. That's a, the only thing I could say regarding that. The pitch, curveball, bounced to short, not hit hard. Crawford to second one, and then Scooter on a first, not in time, and he got oh gosh. hit hard and taken Ow. down by Matt Holliday. He held his ground to make that throw, and Holliday tried to plant him in left field, and Scooter is still down. Playing against Marco in the past, he had the reputation already before he got here of being someone that was not going to be phased by any situation. I and probably every Giants fan watching thought, well, there goes Scudero for the rest of the playoffs and maybe there go the playoffs. He was that important to the Giants. And Scudero's trying to walk it off, but I don't know. And he has convinced Dave Gresham that he can stay in. I didn't think it'd be possible for him to elevate his game because of how well he played for us since we acquired him. He hit 360 plus for us. 
and it was swinging bat well, but after uh, that slide, he turned it up even enough. It's on its way to Scooter O. Scooter O, line drive, base hit, left center field. Blanco scores, Crawford scores, all gets past Holiday. Look out, score, they all score. Payback time for Marco Scooter O. Pretty surprising that you could take that kind of hit and then stay in the ball game and have the game-winning base hit, it, it, it probably changed the series. He trusts himself, he trusts his swing, he trusts his approach, and that's what we're trying to get everybody to do, you know, be Marco Scudero because it works. Two down in the ninth inning, runner at first. The pitch, struck it out, swing it. And the Giants take game two, seven to one, and this series is headed to St. Louis all even at a game apiece. My controls. Check. My deck door. And to go. Uh, Transpot. Never had so many people interested in my flight and in my lives. <laughs> All right. Um, he says we're clear to start, so. You know, 18 zero six heavy, okay. Uh, runway sign will be two A right. Make the left turn on to Charlie, hold short of one by. Bravo, Friday morning. Now, 18 just to cut your mother, child, 1 2 0.5. Go, Giants. Pop jump right side. Foul ball. Carpenter is there. Cardinals win game four. And lead three games to one. And he's pre final tonight. Game five, I don't remember. I mean, I, I just remember kind of being in a different mindset than I'd ever been in on the mound before. You know, the last thing I wanted to do was go home for four months and know that I didn't give it absolutely everything I had. And I, I couldn't guarantee anything out there, but I could guarantee that. When we looked at, at the five starters, uh, yeah, we just felt uh, the other four were throwing the ball a little bit better. Disappointed uh, in myself for, you know, for not cracking that rotation, um, but, you know, I, I stand behind Bo, he's, uh, he's a skipper, so, you know, I stand behind his decision. What's your best memory as a baseball player? Z? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the World Series for me was bittersweet. Uh, so, obviously, it was, it was quite a rush, but I, I plan on contributing this year, so hopefully that'll be my best. There you go. I think Barry this year was actually comfortable with what he had, his stuff and the style of pitcher that he was and how we had to get guys out. And he got comfortable and he got confident as the wind started piling up. He never quit working. He never changed his attitude every day from when he was not pitching great to when he was pitching great. He was the same guy. He uh, epitomizes pitching. And even though he's been doing it for a long time, I feel like uh, he's learned learned more stuff about himself within the past couple of years. He's a different pitcher than he was for his heyday, and I think it took him not just one, but it took him several years to come to grips with the guy that he is. Despite his disappointing performance in the division series, Zito would have another chance at retribution for 2010, facing a Cardinal team poised to return to the World Series. You may be gassed, and, and you may be on the verge of elimination like they were after losing two at home, but you know what turns it around? A powerful performance from your pitcher, like Vogelsong did in Cincinnati in game three. That changes the whole thing around. You think Zito could come out and give a powerful performance? Probably not. The probability of, of a win tonight by the Giants, I think, is pretty remote. Will Zito get out of the first inning? What? How about the second? <clears throat> Jesus, Mike. I'm Mike. going inning in two thirds. The biggest part of the postseason, as any guy knows at this level, is to calm your nerves so you can just go out and enjoy the game. Because if you start believing in all the hype and listening to all the, you know, the shows and everything, how important it is and San Francisco history, it's like we don't even know how to carry that crap out there, you know? Facing elimination yet again. The Giants found themselves thriving under the pressure. This game is where we live. How we live, we love it. And you out there saying, we are not going home. You see 25 guys have a relentless attitude of whatever we need to do, we're going to do it. You know, we found ourselves with our backs against the wall, you know, turning, you know, turning to each other, you know, what are we going to do? You know, and it was just the same idea, you know, play for the guy next to you, play for the, the, the name on the chest, on your back. But at the same time, you're thinking, have we worn out our elimination game heroics? All hands on deck, game on.
Elimination game. Go get him, Barry Zito. I'm going to puke now already. Crook a cap on baseball. Out loud. <laughs> Enjoy the ball game. So today's game, son. <laughs> Who's on the mound? Barry Zito. And what do you think? He can handle the cards today? I sure hope so too. The Cardinals could win it all, right? They could take the pennant. There's only one man standing between. No, that's the, that's what everybody's saying all day. There's only one man, but there's not one man, is there? There's how many? There's only one team. That's right, 25 guys. Right? One common goal. Win today. Win today. Right? But this is the biggest moment. This is probably the only reason why um, you know we were able to get back to San Francisco against St. Louis was. There was an inning early on where they had like nobody out and a ball's hit down the line by Freeze. Swing a fly ball to right field on the move to his left. Toward the line is Pence. He makes a dive. He can't get it. And I dive for it and I just miss it. Cardinals have it set up here to do some damage. Just miss it. Went 0 0 at the time. Molina at third, Freeze at second, nobody out. Zito pitch it for the strikeout. Here's the scratch, the pitch. Struck him out. And Zito finds a way to wiggle out of that inning without giving up a run. And broken bat, one hopper to short, should be two. Crawford to second one. Scooter on a first. Two, a double play. You know, I wasn't able to catch that ball, and he picked me up. Well, that's a momentum switch right there. Immediately, we see him not willing to, to back down, so we got to pick it up. Two to Pence. Pence taps one. Lynn has it. He goes to second. Throws it away! Coming in to score is Scudero, and the Giants lead 1-0. It's great when you get breaks go your way because it fuels momentum. It makes you feel that feeling of belief is a little more intense. But you still have to perform. You still have to have the ability to take advantage of those good breaks. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball hit up the middle in the center field. Zito tries to bunt, third base side. It's a good bunt. Breeze has got it. He throws off. Now it's the first, and Zito beats it out. And coming in the score is Blanco. Nasty! Nobody was thinking bunt, and Zito puts down a pearl. One-two pitch on the way. Beltran strikes out swinging. And he put that fastball up and in. He had the maniacal focus you love from a pitcher. He was just walked in. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. We just fed off of his energy, his belief, his confidence. Pence into a slide, and he makes the catch. That's what made you feel, okay, we're going to win this whole thing. We're not just going to win this game. Swing, and Pablo belts one down the right field line toward the corner. Adios, pelota, Pablo's on the wall. Was the hope of David Kenny that Zeta would bring a very solid confidence into this game and everybody else would pick up on it and that really is what happened. Way, way to go. Way to go. The Giants are going home. All right, boys. Go win it at our place, fellas. What Barry Zito did in that game, and I really think that was a turning point in that series because we got back home, we got in front of our fans, and, and these guys could smell it. The connection between the Giants and the city of San Francisco is one that transcends baseball. This passion has created an identity that can only exist through one another. It's really a two-way relationship. Um, fans to the team and teams to the fans and they feed off each other. <laughs> well, our fans are, are part of our club. That's how we feel, and uh, it's their enthusiasm that, that, that helps give these players the adrenaline to run on as long as they had to uh, this year. And, and as bad as uh, they want to win for themselves and each other, they, they, they want to win that bad for the fans, too. The identity of this team has been so interwoven with the identity of the city. San Francisco has become such a giant's town. The orange and black is sort of the emblem of this great city. And I think people take a lot of pride now. It, when the Giants are doing well, San Francisco, the Bay Area, feels better about itself. You know, it, it goes beyond sports when you say that because there's lessons to learn that uh, if you're a kid or a student, you can use those lessons to suggest uh, the uniqueness that this team brings is that whenever things happen in life, you can still bounce back. You can still uh, really succeed. Uh, those, are the, those are the kinds of civic pride that I think people learn from uh, what, when they see the story of the Giants, they, they kind of inherit that. 
All right, got to have that on. San Francisco, are you as excited as I am today? Are you ready to kick some Cardinal ass? That feeling I had through this postseason is what you try to get every game. And, and it's not something you can create, it just happens. And it, it happened for me at the right time, and the only way I can explain it is God put me here to do that. Now the wind up, Vogelsaw, it's two and two pitch. Struck it out, swing it. He's gotta be nervous, he's gotta be pumped up, and to be able to just uh, paint like he, he painted through the playoffs, and it just shows you how control he is of his emotions and his mind. Vogelsaw Lenson. And that fooled him big time. The blizzard of orange here at AT&T Farm. The one-two pitch. Strike three call to the outside corner. He strikes out the side. Swing. There's a shot. A triple standing up. Brandon Bell in a laser beam. Squares around. The runner for first goes. The ball is rolled to shortstop. That's going to get the run home. And everybody saves. Scudero in the series hitting 429. For 21, the pitch. Fastball lined into left field deep. A double for Scudero. Four nothing Giants. He does it again and again and again and again. I never thought I would get to the point on a baseball field where I had to back the adrenaline down. But in that situation, I did. Swing and a miss. He got him. Victim number nine. Oh, what if you're going to get a career high? Do it the playoff game. <laughs> Why not? That's the best I've ever thrown the ball in a major league game. Another brilliant performance by the veteran right-hander, who's be he's become the ace of this postseason. The pitch. Slider lifted to center. In a little bit. Pagan, he's under it. He's got it. Another elimination game won by the Giants. Now they'll get their seventh game tomorrow night. They're, they're not supposed to be here at this point. These giants have been called a bunch of cockroaches or zombies. You know, we, just, we don't know how to die. It's going to be a tremendous experience for, for sports fans, baseball fans of the Bay Area tonight, no matter what happens. But obviously, a little awesomer if the Giants can pull it out and make some history. And how many people can say they played in a Game 7? How many people can say they've even seen a Game 7? It's huge. You can feel the buzz. One game, and it's just, I mean, it's for everything. I, I want these guys to, to really appreciate what they've done and how hard they've, they've worked to get here. And uh, now it's what uh, makes this game so beautiful when, when, when you get to a series like this and it goes seven games. It's going to be a, an epic game. It just is. And tonight's the night. The Giants are going to win this thing. You have a great group of core guys that love what they do. Um, Love coming to work together each day. Um, are good players, competitors, um, and realize what it takes to win. And you add all those things up, and, and it, it builds chemistry. The Giants who have faced elimination twice already in this series won both of them to get here. There goes Pagan. The pitch is right field, right through that hole. Base hit. Combo swing, and it's a slow tapper. The first base on the mound. Motion as it spins around, hooks it home. Throws to first instead, and the Giants have a one to nothing lead. Molina from third, the Scouts from second with their leads. The one two pitch. And a loop to short. Back goes Crawford and leaps to make the catch. I think momentum is confidence in a lot of ways. When you're a confident team, momentum's on your side. And you play with an extra verve, an extra swagger. Swing line, drive, base hits center field. Blanco scores, and Matt Kane is the man who gets the clutch. Sitting on a 2 0 lead with the bases loaded, nobody out. And Pence, it's a line drive into left field, a base hit. Coming in to score, Scudero, Sandoval right behind him. Jay overruns it. Buster Posey scores all the way from first. I have never seen a, a line drive do that. I guess the slow motion, amazing camera they have was able to show why it, the ball had such crazy movement. So it was kind of one of those lucky, magical things that happens in the playoffs. Giants fans stand up again, trying to help their ace right-hander get through David Freeze. Two and two. Freeze swings and misses. Strike three. Listen to the ovation Kane's going to get. It will be enormous. All 
of a sudden we're getting uh, this this rain that we rarely see here, and it's like the baseball gods were were saying, "Hey, we're here to help." It got wetter and. Uh, more puddles on the field and everything than I've ever seen with a big league game, much less a postseason game. We're looking at something that's so bizarre, that so never happens ever. Yeah. Yeah. Fans start cheering it on, and like that energy that they, when they start cheering it on, you know, you start realizing how beautiful this moment is. A dream is coming true, and you're like feeling like a kid again. Slider, popped up. Scudero at second. He's got it. The Giants win the pennant. almost like a scripted, improbable, incredible orchestration that, you, that would never happen if you tried to orchestrate it that way. This is unbelievable. It is so beautiful. It is so almost uh, like an out-of-body experience. It looked absolutely made in Hollywood. It did. They call me Blockbuster, but uh, to this day, I don't even know why. I guess because they always say that to me when I even made a good play or I, I get a nice hit or something like that. They always, I score a run, they always shake my hand, Blockbuster, Blockbuster, but the mean exactly, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Probably have different means, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, what do you think it is? This has been an exclusive presentation from SFG Productions.